Today we're doing a party food. Look at that juicy chicken and that charry skin. Oh, so good. You guys are going to love this Thai style chicken with spicy sauce. The first thing we need to do is get a marinade going for our chicken. And I'm going to start off with some lemongrass. And what we want to do here is Take that end off and we want to get rid of the outer sort of really hard tough parts of the lemongrass so give that a good bash with the bottom of your knife. So they're kind of like firm and chewy so we don't really want those in our marinade. Just slice that up finely. All right, next up coriander roots. You find this a lot in Thai cooking. We use a lot of the coriander root. It has a really great flavour and you know I know a lot of you don't like coriander and that's perfectly fine so just leave it out. Okay, so next up is garlic. I want quite a bit of garlic. Bruise and take those skins off. Just roughly chop those. Okay, now we just want to make a little rough paste here. So that's looking pretty good and it smells amazing already. Now I want some white pepper and some fish sauce and some sugar. Now, traditionally you would use palm sugar for this, but I find outside of Thailand, the palm sugar can be really hard, which means trying to mix it into a marinade like this without heating doesn't work out so well. So I'm using brown sugar, and that's easy for you guys to find. And a little bit of dark soy, which is gonna give us a really beautiful, lovely dark color. Okay, and that is looking lovely. Mmm, and tasting lovely as well. It's salty, garlicky, peppery, yum, just perfect. Okay, now I'm going to spatchcock this chicken because that's going to make it cook quicker and more evenly in the oven. So to do that, just flip your chicken over and then just use some scissors to cut through the side of the backbone and then the other side. We want to remove that backbone and the neck. And then flip your chicken over again and then press down firmly on the breast just enough to flatten that chicken out. Okay, chicken is now ready for our marinade. Put that onto a tray lined with foil. Definitely want the foil for this one, guys, because the marinade will get quite sticky and who loves to do washing up? No one. Okay, so I will put our marinade onto the chicken. Now, if you're super organized, and I often am not, but if you are, then I would um, marinate your chicken overnight and then you'll get a much stronger flavor. But you know what? Just putting it straight on into the oven is fine as well. And now just use your hands to massage that marinade into the chicken. So traditionally this would be grilled over charcoal. And if you guys have a charcoal barbecue at home, that would be the perfect way to cook this. But for an easier way, we're gonna do this in the oven and in two steps. Foil first, and that's actually gonna help to cook the chicken through before we start to get all the chariness on the outside. So we want 25 minutes under foil in the oven. Now we're gonna make a very traditional sauce for our chicken. It's nam jim dao. So first of all, we wanna make a roasted rice powder and we're gonna use some uncooked sticky rice or glutinous rice. So in your Asian section of your supermarket, look for glutinous rice or sticky rice. And we're just gonna to toast that until it's really fragrant and lovely and lightly golden. Now you know you're getting close when it starts to smell like popcorn. That's the fragrance we're looking for. Color is beautiful. And just use this pestle to grind it to a fine powder. Now for the rest of the sauce, we want some fish sauce, some tamarind. This sauce should be very spicy and sour. They're the sort of flavors we're going for but we do want a little bit of sugar to balance out that sourness. So I'm gonna add some brown sugar and we want some lime juice as well. Okay, now for that toasted rice and some chili powder. So again, this is supposed to be a fairly spicy sauce. So I'm gonna put in a lot of chili powder, but you guys can adjust that according to whatever tastes you have. Just gonna mix that through. Mm, this is one of those sauces that really packs a punch. Okay, and the final little bits and pieces are just a little red shallot, and we just want to finely slice that, and then some finely sliced coriander. Okay, let's take a look at our chicken. Now, at this point, this guy is only half dressed for dinner, so we are just going to use you know, this, these cooking juices and lightly brush the outside of the skin. Now this goes into the oven for another 15 minutes. 
right, so this chicken is looking amazing. Yum, so beautiful and shiny, sticky. Now just let that chicken rest for a few minutes before you slice it up. Okay, now to carve up our chicken, don't be scared guys, I'll show you an easy way to do this. So grab a hold of the whole chicken and then cut through the middle and just give your knife a bit of a tap as it's going through the bone. Any heavy knife will do, you don't need a big cleaver like I've got here. It's always more fun with a big cleaver though. And then we want to take our drumsticks off first. So just slice that knife through the joint where the drumstick meets the breast and that should come away quite easily. Pull that off. Now because the leg is always the favourite part of my house, I'll have to divide that one in two so there's more pieces. So just through the drumstick and thigh piece. Again, just tap that through. Now for the chicken breast, just slice through the meat down to the bone again. Just tap, tap through there. And I want those out on a nice serving platter for everyone to help themselves. And in Thailand, we would serve this with some sticky rice and some somtham or papaya salad as well. But you know, even just some steamed rice and that beautiful dipping sauce we've made is good as well. So these little guys are so ultra tasty, you will not be able to resist. I can't wait for you guys to make this one. First thing we're going to do is make a little flavour paste and I'm going to use some coriander root. So I like to use the root end of the coriander plus a little bit of the stem as well. You can save those leaves for something else. And then I also want some garlic. This is a very traditional Thai paste actually. The coriander root, the garlic, the, the pepper that I'm going to add. It's the basis of a lot of different dishes and pastes. Okay, and then I want a little bit of white pepper. You'll find that we use a lot of white pepper in Thai cooking. Um, it has a more mellow flavor rather than the harsh flavor of black pepper, but if black pepper's all you've got, just use that. Quite a bit of salt here. The salt's gonna do two things. It's going to help with the texture of the shrimp cake, and it's also going to add flavor, obviously. Now I wanna whisk that up to a fine paste. And for the prawns themselves, prawns, shrimp, whatever you like to call them. Um, so I'm using some tiger prawns here and I, I love these tiger prawns. They go a beautiful pink color when they're cooked, but banana prawns are fine. Any prawns or shrimp that you have in your local area is good. I just like to give these a little bit of a, a slice first just to give them a head start in that food processor. Now, if you're using frozen prawns, just make sure you defrost them and then pat them dry really well on paper towel because frozen prawns tend to have a bit more moisture about them. We don't want this mixture to be too wet. Okay, so finally we want to add in a little bit of baking powder and this is my secret ingredient that's going to give our shrimp cakes a really lovely spongy texture. Now blend that until it's really nice and smooth. Empty that paste out into a bowl. There's a few little chunks of prawn in there. It kind of looks a little bit more homemade so that people know that you really went to the effort. Now to make this whole crumbing process easier, I'm using a mini ice cream scoop. It's probably about a heaped tablespoon's worth. And I just dip it in some water first and then scoop up some prawn mixture and scoop it straight out into my breadcrumbs. Now just cover these with a little bit of your panko breadcrumbs. I'm using panko breadcrumbs. You could use any breadcrumbs that you've got in your cupboard. It's fine. I like these because they're nice and crispy. And sort of just flatten those balls out to a nice little round shape. They will puff up quite a bit when they're cooking. So I want to start them off with a nice neat shape. Now this is great make-ahead party food. I've just got a tray here lined with baking paper and I can put all of these straight into the freezer and then once they're frozen, I'll pack them into Ziploc bags and then I can just cook them straight from frozen whenever I need to. The sound of that sizzle is exactly what you want. Now these prawns are looking really good. Just move those around in the oil. Just drain those on paper towel. salt. See, so I'm using some of my mum's Nam Dim chili sauce. You can find the recipe for this on my YouTube channel. Mmm, 
so good. Just wait, put my lipstick on first. Lipstick on, now let's cook it. <laughs> I got a special one for you today. Marion say, a lot of people want me to make Thai dessert. No, I know you to be make dessert. No, it's sweet enough already. Oh. <laughs> I make just for you. Thai mango sticky rice. The best dessert in the world. But don't eat too much. You get fat like my son-in-law. I'm just joking. He's not fat. Just chubby. Now we're going to start with sticky rice. What you're looking for is this rice like this. When you have the chop, you see here it says glutinous rice or sticky rice. That's the one you want. You have to prepare one day ahead. And see on this bowl, I have soaked in the water to yesterday. Let's hope make it soft. You take the rice out, out the water, just put it in the cloth, clean tea towel, just spread out a bit, just cover up. I got a steam it here, boiling water underneath, that's all you need. And you put this in the top of that. Put the lid on, steam in 20 minutes. While my rice is cooked, I gotta make coconut flavor for the rice. First of all, I need coconut milk and sugar and the salt. The salt is important here. Gotta bring all the sweetness and flavor. You listen to noise. And mixing. Now we're waiting for the rice. 20 minutes. Now we're going to check the rice. See, look at this. It's sticky but tender. You can try. Mm, this is cooked perfect. Now we're going to put the rice, the sauce we make. We're going to put it on now. Now we're going to mix it all up. Rice will soak up the sauce. A uh, little bit wet now, we leave it the rest. About 45 minutes, you see its texture will change. While we're waiting, got a nice story for you. Long time ago, Marion's dad, he come to my village near Bangkok. My auntie, grandma, everyone there. I make for him Thai sticky rice mango. He say he loved it so much. I'm very happy. A few years later, we got married. And we have Marion. Marion just saying sticky rice. <laughs> now we're gonna make extra pouring sauce. Start with coconut milk and sugar. And again, a little bit of salt. This one gonna have nice salty flavor. That's the secret. Sweet and salty. Now I got some rice flour here. I mix with a little bit of coconut milk. This make it thicker. Now gonna cook nice and thick. Just need a couple of minutes. Now look how nice and thick. Rice is ready now. Gonna put it in a serving bowl. See the rice soak up all the sauce? To be nice and sticky. In the middle. And fetch it up. Now we're gonna slide the mango. Gonna do the Thai way. Now I'm gonna show you. Nice sweet mango. Now I peel the skin. Now I cut half, close to the stone. And just like this. And you slide, this is how Thai way we do. Now we slide on here. Beautiful. Now we're gonna pour the sauce. Look at that. Not a winner from Noi. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one. And that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.